I'll bet that you can't remember your very first dream. Honestly, most people can't remember much before the age of like four or five. And even though we don't have any memories of our earliest days, I think we can all agree that we must have had dreams. We actually did see, hear, taste, and think about things even if we can't recollect them. Heck, I have baby photos to prove that I existed before I can remember existing. So even though I don't remember who I was or what I was doing, I am 100% sure that I was feeling things and I was doing things. So given all this, I have to wonder, when does experience start for humans? In other words, when do we first become conscious? If you ask just about any mother, babies have something like personalities from the moment they exit the womb. Some cry harder than others, some appear more pensive, and it's clear that birth is pretty traumatic for everyone, and trauma means subjective experience. But birth, well, is that the first human experience? And if it's not, does experience start sometime during pregnancy? While it's impossible to know for sure exactly what a fetus experiences inside a mother's womb, the best data that we have from measuring their movement movements and electrical signals suggests that fetuses experience something pretty close to what we would call dreaming. In the first two trimesters, a human fetus transitions through three stages of brain activity that closely resemble REM and NREM sleep, as well as an intermediary stage that has characteristics of both. Then in the final trimester, the fetus begins to, well, I guess you could say it wakes up. It kicks and it bounces and explores the tight confines of the womb for two to three hours every day. As the sleep researcher Matthew Walker notes in his book, Why We Sleep, in the final weeks before birth, the fetus will spend almost nine full hours in REM sleep, increasing all the way up to 12 hours just one week before it enters the world. Walker writes, and I'll quote him here, REM sleep acts as electrical fertilizer during this critical phase of life. Dazzling bursts of electrical activity during REM sleep stimulate the lush growth of neural pathways all over the developing brain, end quote. This process is called synaptogenesis, and it links the brain together into a consciousness-generating machine. If those neural firings are anything like the same sort of brain activity in a child or adult brain, then we have to assume that the fetus is experiencing something in the womb, and that something is most related to what we think of as dreaming. In this sense, every human's most primordial experience of being alive is a dream. Or to push that logic just a little bit further, who we are when we are dreaming is more essential, as in more basic, than who we are when we're awake. The only catch is, that the point when we are still in the womb, fetuses haven't experienced much at all. So how can their dreams have any sort of content? These are the sorts of unanswerable questions that can lead down all sorts of speculative rabbit holes. Talking about who we are before we're born feels more like the territory for a theologian than it does for a doctor or a scientist. After all, different cultures around the world put very different start dates to human life. Some Christian thinkers will argue that life begins at conception. Meanwhile, Hindus and Buddhists who believe in reincarnation might suggest that one life flows into another seamlessly with absolutely no beginning or end to consciousness. And then there's the other end of the spectrum. Uh, the anthropologist Nancy Shepard Hughes has observed in her book Death Without Weeping that high infant mortality areas, like in the favelas of Brazil and certain areas in Korea, where babies aren't considered to be alive until their parents give them a name, a time that could be months or even years after birth. In these populations where death is more likely than being alive, experience is not the issue. It only makes sense to be considered alive if you're going to survive. Now, personally, I see the question of the origin of human consciousness as something of a continuum between these two extremes. Obviously, where you fall on that spectrum plays a lot into how you view the question of abortion, but let's save that debate for another video. What I can say is that the neuroscience of dreaming is that fetuses have periods of increased and decreased activity as they progress through gestation, and fetal dreaming appears 
appears to be a vital part of what ultimately forms human consciousness. That is to say, the very experience you ever had, it occurred in the womb, and it was some sort of dream. Now, this video is part of a series of videos that I've been doing about dreaming for my book, Dream the Art and Science of Slumber. Dig into all of the other videos on the playlist to understand how truly bizarre the dream world really is and what you can do to get the most out of closing your eyes at night. Thank you so much for being here. It's really, really important to me for, to be able to put out this message. And so just remember, you are what you dream.